The movie kicks off with Thurgood Jenkins, also known as Thurgood, reminiscing about his childhood and his journey with his friends. Thurgood introduces us to his crew, including Brian, Kenny, and Scarface, who share a love for marijuana. They recall their first time getting high together, an experience that solidified their bond. Thurgood works as a janitor at a pharmaceutical lab where he's dissatisfied with his job. Scarface, on the other hand, works at a fast food restaurant and constantly butts heads with customers. Kenny, despite being a stoner, excels as a kindergarten teacher. Brian, a music enthusiast, works at a record store. Thurgood reflects on the ease of obtaining marijuana in New York City, whether it's from corner stores, Rastas in Washington Square Park, or delivery services like Sam's and Simpsons. Throughout the opening scene, the audience gets a glimpse into the characters' lives and their love for weed. While they were sitting in their home, their door knocked and Thurgood went to answer. It was their delivery guy. He gave him the money and brought the weed to the group. They smoked and it was time for food. Kenny went out to buy food. As Kenny exited the supermarket with food, he spotted a horse standing nearby and approached it with a handful of snacks. Excitedly, he fed the horse chips and popcorn, only to watch in horror as the animal suddenly collapsed. An officer arrived on the scene, distraught, and called for an ambulance. The officer asked Kenny what he had fed the horse. When Kenny admitted to giving it chips and popcorn, the cop screamed at him, saying that the horse is diabetic. The officer arrested him and took him to jail. His fingerprints and mugshot were taken, and in court, the judge set bail at $1 million. The next morning, Scarface and Brian woke Thurgood to tell him that Kenny had not returned home the night before, and that they were concerned about him. Then a random guy who was sleeping on their couch throws them a paper, stating that Kenny called and is in jail. The three of them went to visit Kenny in jail. Kenny expresses his fear and frustration about being mistreated in jail after being arrested. Thurgood tries to reassure him that they will get him out of here, and Scarface tells him that all they need is 10% of 1 million. Thurgood told him to be tough, and the time was over, so Kenny was taken. Scarface and Brian went out, and just as Thurgood was about to leave, he noticed a woman leaving without her purse and called her. He handed it to her, and they went out together. She introduced herself as Mary Jane, and explained that she was visiting her father, a drug dealer. She told him it ruined her father's life, and to blend in, Thurgood told her he hates drugs. While they were talking, Brian and Scarface kept calling him, so he went to them with her. Following an introduction, Mary Jane offered to give them a ride, and they all got into her car. Thurgood told them not to talk about weed because he does not want her to know he smokes. They arrived at their destination, and as they were about to leave, Thurgood asked if they could meet for ice cream sometime. Brian and Scarface made fun of him, and Mary told the guys to leave. Thurgood gave her his phone number and left. Thurgood is at work, mopping the floor. A scientist in a lab approached him, asked him to get something from upstairs, and handed him a piece of paper. Thurgood went upstairs and handed the lady the paper, she went inside and retrieved a pound of cannabis from storage, and Thurgood freaked out when he realized what the scientist had him get. He signed the paper and went downstairs, where the scientist thanked Thurgood for his good deed by giving him some free marijuana. The scientist informed him that the Food and Drug Administration has requested that they conduct a study to determine the medicinal applications of marijuana. Thurgood brings the marijuana home, and he, Brian, and Scarface decide to get high. Scarface proposes the idea of selling weed to raise money, but Thurgood is hesitant, saying they don't have a supplier. Scarface was implying to the weed that they smoked, and he was suggesting that Thurgood would get more from the hospital. Thurgood insisted they needed a legitimate plan. However, after considering their limited options, he reluctantly agrees to sell the weed. They see it as a temporary solution until they can raise enough money to get Kenny out of jail. They comfort themselves saying that they're not becoming drug dealers, but rather fundraising for a noble cause. Thurgood devised a plan to obtain forms from the scientist at work, forge them, and place an order for marijuana like he did previously. With the little money they had, they bought bikes to aid in transporting the product, and stapled samples of their weed to the back of their business cards. They named their company Mr. Nice Guy. In prison, a guy named Nasty Nate asks Kenny for his fruit cocktail. Kenny refuses, saying if he gives it away once, he'll have to keep doing it, 
and he needs the vitamins. Asti Nate warns Kenny, but Kenny's friend defends him, claiming Kenny is his responsibility. Eventually, Kenny reluctantly gives in. Kenny pleads for help, and his friends reveal their plan to sell weed as a means to raise money. Kenny agreed with their plan, they begin promoting their weed, they went to a party to distribute weed to promote their product, and they finished what they brought. As they were about to leave, they noticed the people having fun and decided to stay. The next day, as they sat with a hangover, the phone rang and Thurgood answered it saying, Mr. Nice Guy, assuming it was someone who wanted to buy. It was Mary Jane and he asked if she wanted to meet now and they agreed to meet after half an hour. He asked asked his friends for money, but no one had any, so he had to leave the house with only $8 in his pocket. He managed to get through the date with what he had and a small amount of money he stole from a beggar. While they were having an ice cream, she began talking about her father and how bad marijuana is. She asked if he smoked and he said no, she made him swear that he doesn't. The next day buyers started to call and Thurgood and his friends started selling weed under the name Mr. Nice Guy. Their business took off quickly, attracting all kinds of customers, from enhancement smokers to scavengers who always want a hit. They encountered nostalgic smokers who reminisce about the old days of weed, and even parents and grandparents who use it for medicinal purposes. During their first week selling weed, Throughgood and his crew made $20,000 in profit since they were stealing the weed, rather than buying it. Scarface even quit his job, while Brian was on the verge of quitting but got fired before he could. They hired Jan to join their team, and she brought organization and efficiency to their operation. Mr. Nice Guy became a huge success, attracting customers from all over New York City. They even stole some customers from their competitor, Samson. One notable customer was Sir Smoke A Lot, who purchased a pound of their finest weed for $9,600. Thrugood came and he saw a dog in the house and asked where it came from. Scarface told him he bought a used dog in a dog house for $250, while Brian and spent $400 on what he thought was a pouch owned by Jerry Garcia. Thrugood, annoyed by this, told them they need to be more responsible with their money, especially since they're supposed to be fundraising to save Kenny. He reminds them that they're not drug dealers but fundraisers, and they need to focus on their goal of saving Kenny. Thrugood emphasizes the importance of being responsible and focused, urging his friends to stop spending money unnecessarily. Thurgood and his friends, Scarface and Brian, continued their weed-selling venture to raise money to save their friend Kenny from jail. Along the way, they encountered different types of smokers, including the creatively inspired, the resourceful MacGyver types, and the typical potheads. Thurgood made a weed delivery and was surprised to find Mary Jane opening the door. Initially, he thought she wanted to place an order. However, Mary Jane asked the truth and confronted Thurgood, feeling betrayed by his deception. Thurgood tried to explain himself, expressing his genuine feelings for her and his desire to be with her, but Mary Jane was hurt and decided to end things between them. While Thurgood is sitting devastated by the breakup, Sir smoke -a -Lots was on TV, Advertising their weed, Samson, another drug dealer, also saw the ad and asked for Mr. Nice Guy to be brought. Kenny thanked Squirrel Master for protecting him and asked if there was anything he wanted him to do when he went out. The Squirrel Master informed him that he would be out in 11 days. Kenny realized he wouldn't have protection after 11 days, so he called his friends and told them he needed to get out in 11 days. Thurgood couldn't get Mary Jane out of his mind, Realizing how much he missed her after not seeing her for a week, he reflected on their relationship and the fact that she was the only person he had been intimate with in five years. Determined to win her back, Thurgood resolved to make significant changes in his life. He promised Mary Jane that he would quit smoking weed and make a fresh start, hoping she would give him another chance. Thurgood's first day without smoking weed was tough. He felt grumpy and couldn't stop thinking about getting high. So he decided to go to a meeting for drug addicts. When he said he was addicted to marijuana, some folks there didn't take him seriously. They thought weed wasn't a real drug. Scarface and Thurgood were shocked when they arrived home to find their place in a mess and their dog, Killer Dead. Scarface was convinced it was Samson's doing, while Thurgood tried to calm him down. They decided to give Killer a proper burial to honor him. As they bury Killer, they let their imaginations run wild, spinning outrageous tales about what might have happened. Scarface envisioned a wild showdown with Samson's crew, 
complete with flying nunchucks and bolos wreaking havoc. Meanwhile, Brian dove into Killer's backstory with hilarious exaggerations, painting him as a heroic yet troubled dog caught in the chaos of life. Amidst their stoned ramblings, Brian said the killer could be the guy who always sleeps on their couch. They went to the house and Scarface asked him if he killed his dog, but the guy said no. In the middle of this, the fiend rang. It was Samson calling about Mr. Nice Guy. Samson demanded that Mr. Nice Guy show up at his place the next day, threateningly. Thurgood reluctantly agreed to deliver the message. He also referred Mr. Nice Guy as Jamaican, and Thurgood asked Scarface why he thinks that way. Scarface told him he told Samson that Mr. Nice Guy is Jamaican. The next day, Scarface, Thurgood, and Brian went to meet Samson. Thurgood tried to act Jamaican, but Samson saw through it. Samson demanded to know more about them, but Thurgood struggled to keep up the act. But when Samson brought a crossbow, he admitted they were lying and explained they started selling weed to help their friend who was in jail. Samson then demanded half of their earnings, threatening them if they didn't comply. Thurgood and the others reluctantly agreed, realizing they had no choice. While discussing their dire situation, the guy from their couch chimed in with a suggestion, robbing the lab. He claimed they could double their profits by robbing the lab on Sunday when it would be empty. Thurgood and the others were skeptical but intrigued by the idea. They went along with the plan and went to the lab to rob. When they opened one of the doors, an alarm went off. However, they continued the plan but the security was looking at them through the camera. After filling their paper bags with weed, they ran to the door but were welcomed by officers holding guns. In the interrogation room, the detectives ask if they know Mr. Nice Guy. When Thurgood knows that the detectives doesn't know that they were Mr. Nice Guy, Thurgood told them they can get Samson instead. He told them that they will be meeting with Samson, and he offered to wear a wire. In the van, they smoked before going in, telling the cops Samson knows them high all the time. They went to Samson and tried to get him to say something incriminating. They eventually succeeded and began saying abracadabra, the agreed upon word for calling in the cops. However, because they were high, the police detectives failed to arrive as backup. They fought Samson's henchwomen before being saved by the ghost of Jerry Garcia from Brian's pouch. Police detectives arrived shortly after to arrest Samson and his henchwomen, while Thurgood and his friends are released from custody. They made a deal to get Kenny out too. Thurgood, determined to turn his life around, meets with Mary Jane to confess his decision, to give up marijuana and express his desire to reconcile their relationship. They embrace, symbolizing a new beginning for their relationship. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.